Hey guys, it's Jonathan. Just wanted to do my second assignment on various things, video games. So let's get to it. Now to um, answer the first question on home consoles and how they affected arcade games. It's kind of like this history, I guess, of uh, how Pong came about and was very popular. And then um, kind of just in during that time between the when Pong came out and the popularity of arcade games in the early 80s, uh, console games were always around, but they just weren't that successful, I guess, due to their graphics and the fact that um, you, I guess, I don't know, just didn't seem to have as much, uh, not everyone can play them, I guess. It was mostly meant for kids, I think, and then, uh, but, uh, Arcade games, they were meant for anybody, really. I mean, you could be a businessman in his 40s and taking a break from work and playing for a few hours, for, well, even an hour or lunch break or just a few minutes just to kill some time. No one really cared if you uh, played them, whether you're a kid or a woman or a an old man, and no one really cared. It was just this thing where anyone can go do it and play and have fun. And uh, the controls were mostly simple for a lot of them, I think. And then, uh, yeah, it wasn't one of those things where you were. It was off limits. You could, anyone can do it. Anybody. That is until the dawn of the Atari Twenty Six Hundred came about. That arcade games were starting to uh, have to deal with bit of a competition between home consoles now that they could come up with games the same type of games from uh, con from uh, arcade games with the same graphics and game mechanics and everything and come up you can have like more than one um, type of game in a pack or something like you could have like uh, volleyball hockey things like that that just uh, really seem to uh, well, obviously, variety. <laughs> so, uh, and plus, it was easier to just have it at home and not have to go to a a pub or a bowling alley or something, or even the uh, laundromat to play games. We just stay home and do it there, and be with the whole family or friends, and not have to go anywhere. It's kind of like a VHS, almost how it, that's almost ruining movies. Also due to the fact that uh, they were just making too many of them. They were everywhere. I mean, they were in places where they you think they shouldn't be, like at uh, hospitals, uh, dance halls, or places, you know, that just you wouldn't... Like grocery stores, basically places that do not need them at all. I mean, they are just making too many games, and the games that were very popular were not getting old yet. They were still very fairly fresh and fun, yet they are having all these other games that weren't, they're were probably as fun, but they just had too many of them. I mean, there's no reason to have all these games. They just collapsed on itself for the amount of weight and attention they were giving themselves. No, uh, Nolan Bushnell was the creator and co-founder of Atari and the creator of Pong and it is uh, you know he's really famous because he's basically the reason we have video games now and um, made this really amazing well simple not really well amazing simple fun game where uh, just these two paddles hitting a ball back and forth and if you miss, the other player gets a point, and yeah, a lot of people were happy about that. And um, after a while, he uh, they're doing it hard because they weren't doing well against. Uh, well, they wanted to create this new uh, cell tart or well, uh, cell pong as a console game, but no one would let him. But no uh, game developers wanted to do that, so instead he. Uh, made a deal with Sears and they sold up to a hundred thousand units around Christmas time and uh, 
that really brought in the cash. And so uh, he decided, I'm just going to sell Atari and uh, live off this money. And that's what he did. And uh, well, he didn't really leave Atari. He still was staying around. But after um, the Atari 2000 or 2600 system came out, he didn't think it was going to last long. He thought it was just going to be this short thing that wouldn't do much. And he just really did not want anything to do with that. But it was more that he wanted to do new stuff like the Atari 2600, yet because of, you know, it had, was able to play all sorts of different games and things, but now that he sold Atari and um, basically he no longer had a choice of what to do with it. They, the people that bought it controlled it. And he was always, and he was kind of locking horns with him, just trying to get his way. And he didn't like working for them. They weren't making the right choices. He felt like they weren't make, making the right choices, and that wasn't going to be uh, the twenty six hundred wasn't going to be popular for a long time. It was only going to be for this thing for excuse me for a few years. And then it um, would just be some other old console. So he decided to leave. And uh, unfortunately, he, a few years ago, before then, he wrote this, uh, signed his name on this document that stated that if he ever left uh, Atari, he would never be able to uh, work in. Now for the third answer, for the third question on the engineers of Activision and the crash of uh, Atari. They were, they used to work for Atari, they were the top designers and uh, engineers for it, so they made basically, they were the guys that made the best games. Yet, uh, they left due to the fact that they weren't getting paid enough, they weren't being uh, recognized and credited for their work because... Back then, I guess, they didn't consider them like authors or directors or people that actually, you know, had put work and effort and were recognized for it. And they weren't. So they were PO'd about that. They didn't get paid enough. And they decided, you know, F you. We're going to go do our own thing. We're going to create a new uh, type of game developer. And that was Activision which is still alive today working under other game working as a game develop uh, working developing games for uh, systems like other you know, like consoles and I think they're still around for a day but back to the crashing because of them leaving uh, Atari Atari wasn't able to uh, make really good games anymore they just tried to uh, do all these crazy things like make uh, a Pac-Man version on the 2600 and that was not a very good game it was uh, just they tried to take like took them like the person one of the people that made the game they only had like one guy make the game one guy and uh, he didn't have a lot of time to make it like, I think like six weeks or so and so because of that he uh, it was just very ugly looking. I mean, the graphics weren't that good. The sounds, the gameplay was just glitchy as hell. And it just did not work at all. It was a terrible, terrible game. Anyway, a lot of them were taken back, sold back, due to the flat fact that they sucked. And then another game that they made um, was an adaptation of E.T. Now, this is around the time that E.T. was... A supposed to be a huge film, huge hit. So Atari figured, hey, let's make a game for, uh, based off the film, it's going to make a lot of money. And uh, that too did not work. I mean, they kind of did the same thing they did to Pac-Man. They just rushed it. Mm, excuse me. They rushed it, and it was just this really terrible unfinished game where you try to collect pieces of a phone to phone home, really, but, uh, yeah, it just looks awful, sounds awful, 
and it did look fun. I mean, I never played it, but from the looks of it, it looks like you just kind of walk around, and then you, f like, go through a frame, and it just didn't look finished. It looked like it was just, like, this game that was a fourth of the way done, and it was just terrible, terrible game.